Hi, I'm James Robinson, and this is my stock pick of the week. Today, we're going to do the final section on the stock Warner Enterprises, and we're going to focus on the company's uh, wealth creation characteristics. In considering a company's wealth creating capacity, I think you have to look at a number of different categories and ways that a company can return wealth to the shareholders. One way clearly is dividends, and we do a whole special section on dividends because I think that that's a really important way of, uh, and it's a direct way of getting money in the shareholders' hands. <clears throat> Another way is through share repurchases. Effectively what happens is when a company buys back shares, they reduce the amount of cash they have in the treasury, but they also reduce the, am the amount of shares out in circulation and that proportionally increases the percentage of the company the shareholder owns and that also should therefore proportionally increase the profits per share, which should proportionally increase the value of the stock. So it's a bona fide and legitimate way to buy back shares provided you're buying back shares at a price that's close to the intrinsic value. You don't want to overpay for those shares. Let's set that issue aside and just look at the, the share component of, oh, is the company buying back shares? So you can see this company, starting in 2004, did a great job of buying back shares. I mean, 2004 and 2008, they bought back, you know, almost 10 million shares. That's fantastic. Uh, however, then the recession hit and they sold a num some of those shares back through to, from 2008 through 2000, and, I guess, 13. And then in 2013, they started to reduce the number of shares again. Um, so if you look at this company, look going back 10 years, you'll actually see that there are more shares on the market now than there were 10 years ago. But if you go back, you know, say seven years, six years ago, you'll see the company has managed to buy back some shares. So long story short, I, I think it's fair to give the company a pass a little bit for the things that happened during the Great Recession and focus on what this company has done in general. And in general, uh, with the exception of a couple of years after the Great Recession, this company has made a bona fide effort to buy back shares, and apparently have had the cash to do that. So we look at the shares outstanding as not being a negative, but not being a super positive for this company. So in terms of looking at it a little more in depth, if you'd owned 10% uh, of Waco stock at the end of 2012, you'd have about, you would have bought about 7.291 million shares. Today, through stock repurchases, that 7.291 uh, million shares would mean your ownership in the company has increased from 10% of the company to 10.69% of the company. So just under a 7% increase. Now remember, usually I do this chart and I go back 10 years. In this case, I'm only going back to 2012 because that's when the company sort of rounded out and started to recover from the recession of 2007. Um, the good news is your share of the company's earnings would have gone from about $10,300,000 to about $17 million, $17 million. So the earnings would have gone up 70% during that period of time. Uh, and that's in seven years. Uh, and looked at another way, your earnings per share would have gone from $1.41 a share to two thirty-five dollars a share. So from 2012 on, this company's done a very good job of buying back shares. It's a little bit of a uh, stilted period in terms of how long it was. But generally speaking, it's really not that bad. They've done a decent job of returning wealth to the shareholders uh, and enriching the shareholders through stock repurchases. So we've talked about this company, the fact that this company pays dividends. It's not a lot of dividends, but it's some dividends. We've talked about the fact that the company in the last couple of years has paid down $100 million in debt. And we've talked about the fact that the company has repurchased shares in the last seven years. So on top of all that, since 2012, the company's managed to increase its stock or its shareholders' equity from about $700 million to about $1.3 billion. So that's a fantastic amount of increased equity this company has managed to create for us. That's a little bit of a nefarious thing because uh, some of that equity is probably in equipment and that some of that equipment has probably been it probably in fact has depreciated faster than the depreciation schedules because it's you know trucks and those do, do tend to depreciate but generally speaking this company has managed to return wealth to shareholders and increase the value of the company so that's that's a very good sign so i look at return on assets as being a really important measure of the the management and how good a job our management's doing every company has to tie up resources to operate uh, they have to use money to buy inventory and to pay employees and to build facilities and any of the myriad things that are operating in terms of operating a, operating a company. I don't begrudge them the fact that they need to do that. I just want to know that we're getting a fair return on that investment. We've given you money to hold to run the operation. What are you giving us back in terms of annual profits? And so return on assets is the way we measure that. So you can see here that the average company in America, you know, generates some relatively small return on investments. If you're in the top, if you're able to generate you know, six or 7% of uh, return on investment, that puts you in the top 25% of all companies. Obviously, in the, anything over 10 or 11% and you're in the top 10% of companies. So this company is consistently in the top 10% of companies um, 
I'm top 25% of companies in terms of uh, generating return on assets. Uh, the return on assets is you know, in the neighborhood of 8% most of the time. The last couple of years, it's been a little bit higher. Um, so we're pretty happy with that. This is a really good company in terms of its ability to use assets efficiently. And what's more important in this company, that's extremely important because this is a capital intensive business. They have 10,000, 12,000 trucks, they have 25,000 trailers and a whole bunch of other equipment and furnitures and fixtures and, equi uh, and equipment. And so the fact that they're able to have all those assets and yet return us a good return on investment, return on assets, I should say, is very, very important. And one of the reasons that I'm interested in this company going forward. Let's talk about the difference between return on assets and return on equities. Equity is uh, a number which is derived by taking the total number of assets and subtracting the total number of debts. And so if you're a company that's very levered up, that has lots and lots of debt, then you will have relatively small equity. And you'll also have relatively significantly higher risk because that, that debt would create interest payments and could drag the company under in bad times. So you'll find that my companies tend to overperform in terms of return on, on assets. I place a high value on that and I place a lower value on return on equity because I don't like debt. And so what you see here is that um, this company is getting really good returns on assets relative to other companies in the S&P 500 rather than relative to the other thousand companies that I've looked at. But it's not doing as well relative to those companies in terms of return on equity. And that's because it hasn't levered up its equity results with a bunch of debt. And because it has very little debt, a lot of companies have virtually no equity. And so a little bit of profit with very little equity comes this fantastic return on equity. So I don't want to put much stock in this, um, but it is there. It is one of the things that we look at. And so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it briefly. More really to compare and contrast why I think return on assets is more important than return on equity. In addition to the amount of assets that a company currently is employing to operate its business, oftentimes the company will need more money uh, on an ongoing basis to run their operations. And so that's called retained earnings. A company generates a certain amount of profit, they take some of that profit, they retain it in the company and they use it to run their operations. And then um, what's left they can use to pay dividends or invest in the company or buy back stock or any of a myriad of other things. And so I wanna know what the retained earnings component of a company is. My hope is that over time, the retained earnings is not increasing as quickly as the profits. My hope is that the company is a relatively low demand for cash um, uh, over time. And that makes the company more desirable because it means it has more money to spin off back to its investors. And so this here, you can see that the, the company's retained earnings really since 2013 haven't changed very much. And yet um, the company's profits have gone up significantly faster than that. And so we look at the retained earnings uh, for on a year by year basis and say, this is, this is a company that isn't overly excessive, uh, over excessive in its needs for cash. And that's one of the things that makes it attractive. Just as important to me as the amount of money that the company is retaining is how intelligently is it using that money? What I don't want to do is have them retain a bunch of money, use it stupidly and that money goes to waste. What I prefer to do is have the company just save a ton of money, invest it really, really smart and really increase the value of my asset over time. And there's no shortcut for really how to do that. But one, one, you know, sort of halfway way of doing it is something gives you at least a sense that, that, that I use is to say, what is the total amount that company's retained in the last 10 years? And how much of the profits gone up in the last 10 years? And by doing that, I say, okay, so the company's profits went up by this much. Let's assume not much else has changed in the aggregate over those 10 years. So what's the return on the retained earnings? And I like to see a return on retained earnings of about 10%. Uh, you can see that this company has done that certainly for the last three years and has done it generally speaking for most of the last uh, 20 years. It's been real close to 10%, kind of hovering around that number. A couple of times to drop below that is again during the recession of 2008 and 9. And because those numbers were big, they tend, and because this is a 10 year window, a couple of bad years will tend to draw down the results, just like a couple of good years can really pull them up. So um, we, this company does a very good job of getting retained on earnings. They especially have done a very good job in the last three years, which means the last three years combined with the seven or years before or prior to it, which is combined to make that, that 10 year number. So very, very happy with this company's return on retained earnings. So we've talked about uh, in the debt side, this company's change in debt. Uh, we can see that in the last couple of years, they've paid off about $100, billion, $100 million in debt. Uh, we've talked about the increases in cash. So if the company is 
um, not paying down debt and not paying dividends, but they're adding cash that creates value for the shareholders in the long term. Companies pay dividends, that money is, it goes straight to the, to the shareholders. And we've talked about net stock buybacks. Well, if you add all those things up, you come to the orange line, which is cumulative wealth created. And um, cumulative wealth created over the previous five years, I wanna try and even that out because there'll be good years and bad years. And you can see that this company has created cumulative wealth to the shareholders of at least $100 million going back to 2002. There have been some really good times when they were doing as much as $700 million over a five-year period and other years where it's been less. But long story short, this company's always managed to create additional wealth to the shareholders. And that's one of the reasons why I really like this company. You're going to see this thing dropping from 2011 to 2016. Um, that's because the recession, again, throws into this, this five-year average. But I want you to focus not on the fact that that went down, because even though it's going down, they're still generating profit. There's no period of time where they lost money. They just didn't make as much money as they did in the previous years. And I'm okay with that. So here you can see the stocks that we have uh, purchased and held for some period of time and then sold and all of the stats that go along with that. I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's a pretty nice list uh, considering that most of the stocks, you know, more than half of the stocks we've told you to buy, we've sold at a profit since we bought them. Um, the new one on the list since the last time we went over this list is Metafast. Uh, we bought that November 11th. We sold it December 4th, so we owned it for 23 days. So that's obviously pretty good. During that period of time, the stock went up 15.8%, uh, but because we own it for less than a month, uh, that works out to an annualized compounding of 240%. Obviously, not, of all, not all our investments are gonna do that, uh, but this one did. Uh, obviously, the month before that, we had a similar result with Miller Industries, but those are, you know, those are unique circumstances and not what I'm shooting for. What I'm really looking for is to buy solid companies that are gonna grow up at a solid rate over a reasonable period, reasonable period of time, but if I can get a big, fast, quick hit like this and move on to some other investment, then I'm gonna do that. And so that's really what's happening with my closed investments. Um, with my ongoing results, uh, ongoing po current portfolio, you can see that we added Warner Enterprises to the list. We did that on the 11th of December. Um, we're actually down on that stock a little bit as of now, half a percent, nothing really to worry about. Uh, we haven't owned it, we've only owned it for about a week. Um, but the rest of these stocks, you can see they're sort of all there. I think we have three stocks that, we'll, that we've got a negative position on, four stocks. May, uh, generally speaking, most of our stocks are up and most of our stocks are up relatively significantly. So pretty happy with the current portfolio and the way that it's growing. Um, I am getting concerned that the market is overbought and I am finding it harder and harder to find new companies that I wanna buy. I'm probably gonna do a, a, um, a report on that soon and what my strategies might be uh, heading into the early part of next year. But for now, I'm happy with the portfolio. We're up about 34% since February 7th, when I first started posting these videos, and that's relative to about 17% for the S&P 500 since, since February 7th. So pretty happy. Um, if you like this and you wanna find out more, please uh, subscribe, hit the like button. Also, if you want to um, get real-time information when I make trades, buying or selling, you can do that at, on Twitter. Um, my handle is at Robinson Stocks. Thank you very much for your time.